Hello, everyone. This is Suzanne at God, uh, the Gospel Truth. I almost said God Crochet and Chatter. That was my former name of my channel. I still do my crocheting, my knitting, my knitting machines and all that. But we changed it a while back to the Gospel Truth. Everything we do here on this channel is the Gospel Truth. We talk about God. We pray. We pray for one another. Right now, we're reading a book called The Master Potter by Jill Austin. And we just finished up a huge series on Corey Ten Boom. And I was wondering if you would like to do another study on her. It's her being raised up from a child. Her father was a great man of God. I've got the book somewhere. I forgot the name of it, but it's very, very good. So if you'd like to revisit that, we can. Or we can go and start our study in the book of Romans. I'm leaning toward doing a study in the book of Romans. And then after that, going back to the Corey Tam Boom storyline. So, uh, and you can pick up... Um, if you're new to my channel, you can pick up right away where we're at. I always try to do that so you don't jump into something and go, well, I don't understand what you guys are talking about. We do a lot of reviewing. So that's that. Okay, Nana Kathleen. Yay, you friended me on Facebook and you sent me that private message. I got it. I got your address. And I'm wondering, I think I have enough of this yarn to make a headband is gray, white, and black. Would that be suitable for your choice of color or do you still want to keep it to solid black? You can let me know. I just thought this was so pretty. And um, you let me know in the comments below. This is gonna be your ear warmer and I want it suited just for you. All right, let's get back to our story, shall we? Now, the last time we stopped, Beloved is on a very uncomfortable rock, and she's asking to take a leap of faith, to trust in God wherever, wherever she's going to go in life, how she can stand up against obstacles, how she can be an overcomer, and fight off Satan when he pops his ugly head up. We know Satan is a father of lies, and he will do everything in his power to pull us away from Christ once we have committed our life to him. All right, let's get on with our exciting story. Beloved plops down on an uncomfortable rock, fighting to keep her lower lip from quivering. Behind her is only darkness. The path is no longer visible. She's trapped. Angry, hurt, and feeling deeply betrayed, Beloved makes up her mind she will go no further. From a nearby cliff, the lonely howling of a wolf terrifies her. In order to continue the journey, she'll have to jump. She frantically looks for her guide, but now she, he is nowhere to be found. I think several of us have been in this situation where we're required to take a leap of faith. And... It can be very frightening at times because we don't know what's around the next corner. Um, I think most of us want, want to know more of the playing field before we tiptoe into it, but that's not how the Lord works. He strengthens, he strengthens us through our trials and tribulations in life, doesn't he? Should I trust amazing grace? An icy wind blows through the pass and shadowy demonic figures erupt in the darkness filling the air with their vile accusations. Breathing their foul breath close to Beloved's faith, they begin their mockery with taunts and accusations. Why didn't you take that ride back to town? You could be warm and well-fed at Madam's and surrounded by an adoring public. It's not too late. Madam will still take you back. I will never go back to her. Master Potter has me here for a purpose. Master Potter has brought you here to die. One false move and it's all over. You don't have to continue this crazy journey. Soon the sun will come up and you can find your way back without your guide. No, I can't go back, says Beloved with her resolved whining. Waning. 
But Master Potter left you, and that guy deserted you. You will always be forsaken. No, I'm his beloved. He brought you here to die. Your guide abandoned you. Feeling tightness in her chest and trying hard not to believe the demonic influence, Beloved takes rapid, shallow breaths as she peers out through the darkness to the other side of the ravine. She can barely make out her guide sitting before the crackling flames. I think the guide is by that campfire over there. On the other side of the ravine? He won't even help you. What kind of guide is that? Screeches the demons. Where well, they're really playing heavily on her conscience. As she watches, Amazing Grace stands and walks to the edge of the ravine, cups his hand and shouts, Beloved, you can make it. Just take that first step. Trust me. Don't look with your natural eyes. Pray in the spirit. Mustering all her courage, she prays fervently in the spirit as the demons taunt. You're going to die out here. Beloved cries out, I will not listen to those voices. I'm going to live. She runs to the edge and leaps in the air. As soon as her feet leave the ground, she knows she'll never make it to the other side. She's certain death awaits her. The few moments stretch out to seem like an eternity as she tumbles into dark space. In those frozen moments of terror, she cries out the only words she can think of. Master Potter, save me. In a flash, boldness and faith erupt inside her. Peace bubbles up within her from a well deep inside her spirit, as a well she didn't know existed. In moments, valiant strong arms catch her in midair, and she soars like an eagle on the winds of the desert. Finally, he sets her down softly on the other side next to blazing, the blazing fire. Amazing Grace wraps a wool blanket around her shoulders as Valiant resumes his unseen post next to her, gazing into the darkness. He turns toward Amazing Grace, and they both smile in approval. Beloved sits, dumbfounded, staring into the fire and wondering if the last few minutes were real or if she'll wake up from a dream. She did it. She took that leap of faith. She trusted. And now she's wondering, was that a dream? Am I going to wake up? What just happened? A sign in the heavens. Like brilliant diamonds, stars sparkle and dance across a cobalt blue sky as it quickly deepens into black velvet. Amazing Grace promises he will always be near, but Beloved will have to take many risky steps in the realm of faith as she follows him. Looking up into the starry night, Amazing Grace singles out one particular, particularly radiant star. Master Potter has put a sign in the skies for you to follow. It will show you the way back to him. Remember this, things are not always as they seem, but I will never be far away. The wilderness will test you and also teach you of Master Potter's faithfulness. You must follow the star. If you wander from its path, you will be in danger. Always use the guidance Master Potter provides for you. Wandering in the wilderness. He quickly departs blending into the darkness and leaving her great gazing at the brilliant star. She watches it move across the deepening night sky, illuminating the path below. Afraid to stay where she is by herself, she quickly follows. The hot days and chilly nights are uncomfortable and dreary. Tormenting demonic spirits become her unseen companion as she trudges deeper into the wilderness. Lonely and exhausted, she stumbles into the darkness. Jagged rocks have torn her dress, and her legs are cut and bruised from the fall she's taken. Every muscle and joint aches with fatigue. Waves of anger and resentment crash over her tormented mind, and hot tears well up in her eyes. Lord, she shouts, what are you doing to me? Why have you abandoned me? I don't even know where my guide is. Oh, I'm so lonely. I feel like I'm back in the powder's field. She heaves a big sigh and sits down beside the trail to take a break. From behind the next hill, death spews to his motley army of demons. We've got her now. This is the opportunity we've been waiting for. I know she'd give up as soon as she got away from the Potter's house and all his gooey, lovey-dovey compliments. She's tired, hungry, and lonely, and that makes her very vulnerable. You know, this is so true. When we're hungry, tired, and lonely, all our reserves are used up. We don't know what is up and what is down. Our world is turned upside down. 
it's a very frightening place to be. And we have to make a decision during those type of moments in our lives that we don't listen to the demonic voices. Oh, you were better off here. You And, and here's these people wanting you back. And, you know, God has forsaken you. No, we mustn't listen to those. We must remember some key scriptures in our lives to help pull us through and up out of that and keep us heading toward the light to our heavenly prize. One of the little demonic imps says, what she needs is a tall and dark, what she needs is tall, dark, and handsome. Yes, Death says Death smiling, and I've got just the man. Our elaborate network stretches through the community in the valley below. Send out an SOS. They must trap her with the beautiful things the spoiled little princess can't live without. Quickly, let them know of her presence. Once we've got her, Master Prater will never get her back, and I'll be vindicated by my master. He drools at the thought. Backslidden. Self-pity. Go to her now. Just be careful in her of her guide and that stupid angel. Backslidden and self-pity. Go to her now. The two vile spirits move in slowly, wrapping their long tentacles around her head, whispering poisonous words of despair and doubt into her weary soul. Without understanding what's going on, Beloved succumbs to their evil embrace and wallows deeper into despair. Days and nights blend together in a blur of confusion as she seeks desperately to follow her star and find her guide. Occasionally, amazing grace mysteriously appears, leaving food and water. Whenever she spots him, she takes off running after him with every ounce of strength she can muster, crying out, Please stay. I'm alone and afraid. I could die out here. Don't you care? You're a terrible guy. You're supposed to take care of me. As always, Valiant stands close by. Beloved learns that it's better to travel through the cool nights and sleep during the stifling days. The terrain is difficult and barren. Eventually, she can do little more than hobble along on cracked, bleeding, and blistering feet. The journey, she told herself, would be over quickly, now has dragged into several months. She prays to Master Potter and calls out to her guide using every manipulative technique she knows, weeping, crying, beseeching, praying loudly in the spirit, and even stomping her bruised little feet. Anything to convince Master Potter she's ready to be rescued right now, immediately. Still, heaven seems silent to her cries. Have you felt that way? Have you felt so disparaged that I'm not getting answers? Why isn't the Lord answering me? I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm sore. I'm dealing with so many issues in my life. And that can lead you off into the wrong direction if we allow the, all those emotions to overtake us. Enchanter. Late that very night, Beloved sees the dim glow of a lantern swaying back and forth as it winds around the narrow path. As she continues to watch, the amber light draws closer and reveals a dark-haired, handsome man with a curly black beard and mesmerizing green eyes. Meeting her at a fork in the road, he smiles warmly and asks, Are you the one who is lost? We received word that somebody needed help. I volunteer to go out and look while others stay to pray. These mountains are dangerous at night, especially for a beautiful woman like you. Blushing at the obvious flattery, she tells him, Thank you so much. I've been wandering around for months and seem to have lost my guide. Taking out a ram's horn, he blows three loud blasts. This is to let everyone know that I found you and that we'll be down shortly. She tries not to stare, but she can't seem to take her gaze off his tall frame draped under layers of splendid fabric. His white silk tunic is covered by a loose purple robe heavily embroidered in golden geometric shapes around the neck, down the front, and around the sleeves. His white flowing head cover is secured in place with a woven black rope, wound several times around his head and fastened in front with a large dramatic silver pin dotted with multicolored stones. Around his neck are several strands of mesh chains with dangling pendants and coins. On his finger is a large gold ring with what she supposes is his family crest. He gestures toward the wide, expansive desert floor. Do you see those campfires over there? That's my home. 
Why don't you come with me, he says in a seductive, inviting voice. In the distance, she sees large clusters of lights illuminating the darkness. Master Potter must have sent him as an answer to my prayers. There must be hundreds of tents down there. I need a safe place to spend the night, and I need some food. You can spend the night, and we'll give you fresh provision and send you on your way when you regain your strength. You must be cold and hungry. His warm, inviting voice makes her want to throw herself in his arms so he can take care of her. Shivering, Beloved looks up to see the brilliant star moving away from the campfires. She looks back to the stranger. Now I'm confused. Master Potter gave me a guide who told me to follow that star. It seems like it's moving away from here. Whoever heard of following a star, really? said the handsome stranger. A star will never lead you out of this darkness, for stars need darkness to shine. I've lived in this desert for years, and I know way better than any star. I'll guide you into the light and to safety and protection. A gentle, warm breeze rushes past Beloved. Out of the soft wind, a still voice whispers, Don't trust him, Beloved. Follow the star. Beloved, immediate needs are all she can think of, and she's feeling quite drawn to, stranger, to the stranger. She brushes the voice aside, reasoning to herself. It's ridiculous to follow this stupid star. I probably didn't hear my guide right. Anyway, he abandoned me, and it's obvious Master Potter sent this man to help. <sighs> How soon we forget. How soon we forget the words of the Master Potter, that he'll be with us, he'll never leave us or forsake us. Even when we can't see him, he was always there. And now, Beloved is having all these doubts and making excuses. I didn't hear my guide right. He abandoned me. When we're feeling hopeless and abandoned, that's when we need to draw closer to scriptures and, and pray to the Holy Spirit to bring back to our remembrance all the things God has promised. And it will be interesting tomorrow when we pick up to see what Beloved's next steps are. Right now, she's believing this tall, handsome, dark stranger. He's got a silver tongue. You know, people can be very deceitful. They'll tell you just what you want to hear when you're hurting. They want to pull you away. I've got a better way for you than what you've been doing. You know, it's, you know just leave that all behind. You know, that's nonsense. Satan is the father of lies indeed. All right, we're going to stop here and uh, pick this up tomorrow. Okay, uh, please pray for me. I've been having dizzy spells up and on today. Just like right now, I'm a little lightheaded. Um, I get that every once in a while, and it's kind of nerve-wracking. I do need to go to the grocery store, but I may put it off till tomorrow. Um... I am going to, this week, be working on Nana Kathleen's ear warmer for her. And uh, maybe closer to Christmas, I may be having another giveaway. Um, I decided today, I think I'm going to start on some knitted dishcloths for Christmas gifts for my family. I found a really cute pattern. You knit two dishcloths. It's called Grandma's Favorite Dishcloths. They've been around for years and years and years and years. They're very popular. They're, they wash up dishes beautifully. And you make two of them, and then you connect them together into little britches. So uh, when I get my first set done, I will show you. Um, oops, there I did it. I made a promise. <laughs> I will do my best to get them done. There we go. All right, everyone. You have a blessed day in the Lord. This is Sunday, the Lord's Day, and I'm feeling very blessed and um very comforted by the Lord today. My husband's watching the Lions game. And uh, I think I'm going to rest a little bit and see how I'm feeling in an hour or so. And I still might pop over to the grocery store. All right, you all take care. You have a blessed day. And Lord willing, I will be back on tomorrow for our next adventure with Beloved. <laughs>